Hey y'all, it's DJ. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're doing my midterm for Link 36, African American English. First, I want to talk about what African American students um, would gain from knowing about this course, hearing about this course, taking this course. I think that would really benefit them throughout their college career is knowing that, um, yes, in our society nowadays, there is a specific time and place to either use that variety or use standard and or use standard English. For a lot of people, I think African American students, in particular, who do speak African American English, are subjected to this double consciousness. It's almost like if I speak this way, first of all, how will I come up to come off to people in my own ethnic group? Second of all, how will white people see me if I speak this way? Um, but I think it would really benefit them to know that there are professors and TAs and people in just professional environments that do speak African American English and they do speak it in classrooms, just like Professor Charity does, just like Jasmine does during my section. I think that's important. Let's talk about things that I think will draw students in to taking this course. Uh, I actually promoted a lot. I actually talk about how great of a professor Professor Charity is, um, how well she teaches, what an interactive class it is, because I think interaction means a lot to me and, other, and to other students. Um, because a lot of the times in large lecture halls we feel like we're not heard, our opinions don't matter, but in Professor Charity's course, she almost like, <laughs> after a question, she kind of like scours the room, like she looks like she's hungry or something, like she's like, Hmm. like waiting for someone to raise their hands and answer the questions like um and furthermore when someone answers the questions and the answer is a little off she acknowledges her answer says yes and then waits for another person to answer and then so on and so on i do bring up the weekly assignments but i do bring up that they don't feel like they're weekly because some of them are actually pretty easy like the library scavenger hunt the study cert certificate they were tedious but very simple and even when we have an essay due, it's only two pages, and it's honestly not that difficult because the topics are very thought-provoking, and so it doesn't feel like a lot of work. Enough of that. Post-undergrad me wants to go to grad school, um, but graduate school for linguistics. Um, I was actually researching uh, neurolinguistics opportunities, and I found one specifically neurolinguistics in New York uh, with Dr. Valerie Schaefer who focuses on understanding the relationship between language and brain development in children. Not only does she focus on language and brain development in children but she focuses on language and brain development in monolingual and bilingual children with language impairments and autism spectrum disorders. And I found another uh, faculty at another university by the name Isabel Barrieri, who <laughs> works at um, Yelid Villalda Research Institute in Brooklyn, New York, uh, who focuses on doing research on how children develop in different cultural and linguistic settings. Um, also focusing on students with delayed or atypical development uh, and cultural specific development, which is also very interesting. And there are two programs that I found, um, SROP at University of Illinois in Chicago. This program isn't necessarily linguistics based, it's research based. It focuses on introducing underrepresented individuals to a research experience. Um, over a period of 10 weeks, there's a stipend of $4,000, which sounds like a lot, but I know in the future it's not going to feel like a lot for me. But they also teach you how to apply for grad school and how to apply for financial aid, which I think would be very helpful for me because I don't know anybody personally who's gone to grad school. Um, and the National Science Foundation, after I get my PhD. Um, so it was really interesting because when I was looking it up, I had the idea, you know, I'm going to be a neurolinguist in the back of my head. Um, and I found that the NSF for linguistics um, prefers giving grants to projects pertaining to what role human neurobiology plays 
in shaping um, the various grammatical properties of language. How does language develop in children? Which is something I already brought up that I thought that I told you I liked. And what social and cultural factors underlie language variation and change? Um, but I didn't even get to talk about the people on campus. There is Vanessa Woods, a biopsych professor who I don't think she does research, but I know she has been more helpful to psych students um, than advising has been. Uh, she teaches them, or she invites them to seminars. She has invited them to do research in different places in other, like with other people, um, like referencing them to other um, professors who are doing research. And Lao Zimin, who I am actually gonna be interviewed by. Um, I didn't know he was a linguist, but he's a linguist um, here on campus who is writing a book on um, trans people's voices. Um, that's about it. I'm signing off. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Peace out.